Okay, back to this. We have fracturing from the rising plume at Sour Creek Dome. We have fracturing that's deep down in the soil from the original caldera. In the 1970s, there was a elephant back ridge, which was when this basic two of them rose at once. There was more of a channel and it was like cracking the elephant's back. And so we had fracturing this way. These fractures also cross here. They cross in here, just where all you, that's why the earthquakes look like shattering glass. They were traveling along all these fractures. Here's the danger spot, and I've really kind of goofed it up. If you, I'll provide a link. This caldera is intersecting with this rise, which is going to be channeled by the water. The water gets in here, gets in the geysers, and as it drains, it really just plows out channels, channels. And then you have the partial roof collapse, which I talked about. So the water from the lake is going to undermine the entire geyser system. The geyser system is going to just fall apart like Swiss cheese. It's going to be leaving these great big gaps. That's going to trap all the gas from the steam that rushes down into the hot, hot uh, aquifers because this ground is superheated with magma from here and here. You can see how close it is. This whole area is just steaming. So it's going to fall apart. That's going to keep just a small lid on it. It's going to rise and create more fractures. This lake is going to empty in there. It is going to be an explosion beyond your wildest imaginations, beyond what they're describing. I'm sorry, that's a terrible diagram. I wish somebody would help me. I've been begging for a long time. But as you can see, each eruption happens when the hotspot meets the caldera's rim the old caldera, because that's a fracture. That's a fracture that's deep enough to get down in the magma, let magma up. The magma starts channeling its way up. It starts opening up the soil, cracking more and more. Like you wouldn't believe how many fractures there are now. So these fractures become like a staircase down. They're all big blocks. So magma is going to channel up the staircase and water is going to come in and it mixes in. It, actually, the magma and the water don't touch, so no, don't let me get off point. But I'm just saying that it, underneath that ground, you know, the magma chamber's roof, there's geysers at the top and the lava's coming up. They're not mixing quite, but they're interacting. The heat's steaming, knocking out parts. You're going to cut a pocket, the pocket's going to rise, the lake's coming in. This thing is going to be a gigantic explosion. It's going to be bigger. They just think the roof is going to fall in. They think that it'll kind of open up like a zip around the outside and then jets will come out and then the chamber will just fall in. No, the chamber is going to go many kilometers into the air. There's going to be a huge shock wave that could spread. I, I don't even know. I don't have all the facts and figures and, and models like they do at universities. I'm doing this when I'm bored in my home. I hope you can help. Yellowstone is in a critical state. And watch my experiment. Uh, one day I might make a bigger experiment just to make it more obvious. That was a tiny tin can with a bit of oil in it. But it really did <laughs> explode. So, sorry it's terrible. If you don't understand something you want to make it clear in your head, ask a question, I will clarify it. I'm sorry. I'm... My head's even more of a mess than that if you can believe it. So. <laughs>